Welcome back to week 12 of O-Shift. That's crazy. 12 weeks of y'all staying right here with us through this chaos. You'll notice a few changes this week, such as I no longer have a porn stash. I thought this would excite Scooter and it would make us bond even better than before, but instead he decided that he's disgusted by the sight of me and will instead return next week when I get my act together. So, I won't be doing the news this week. Instead, we're going to give you a fully loaded show about, well, you'll find out what it's about. You thought I wasn't going to give you the news? Up first, we have Toyota announcing that the GR Corolla is getting launched in hatchback form with all-wheel drive. What the hell are we going to do now? Says Honda. Aston Martin waited so long to bring back the V12 Vantage that James Bond has literally grown old, had a family, and died. In other news, Kia Group is doing what they do best and giving us a new car almost every other day. I feel sorry for the rest of you girls. All right, let's jump into car show stuff. This is a part where I get to be annoying and tell y'all to like our video and subscribe so we could keep sending you more of this fun more, stuff more. about cars. Oh, Shift made its way to Cars and Coffee this week where there's a ton of cars, not much coffee. So who knows what we're gonna talk about? Maybe the A90, maybe the 992, another A90. Doesn't really matter what number we throw at your face. What matters is what happens inside of that gate. If you've seen any Fast and Furious movie, you probably have a good idea of what this is right here. It may not be the original, but you can't tell the difference with it rolling down the street. Sean's done an amazing job with this butte right here. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about this build. So it's a, it's a tribute car for the actual, it's a tribute build for the actual car um, from the actual franchise. There's only one that actually survived and that's sitting in the museum. I mean, you would never be able to see it driving down the road, right? Um, I tracked down, it took me like pretty much a year to track down all the parts, uh -huh. uh, like the veil side wheels, veil side body kit, everything, working with the designer on, on the graphics to recreate the whole yeah. thing. It's like literally sitting on the, on the Fast and Furious, uh, the Two Fast and Furious video and screenshotting every <laughs> little, you know, every time the car appears on screen, right, <laughs> to, to dial in the, the graphics. Um, we painted the body kit um, and we wrapped the whole car. So it's a printed wrap. So we can kind of create uh, the airbrush kind of looking oh, that's for the car. Yeah. Everything is Velside authentic. It's an, uh, it's a, it's an AP1, S2000, 2001. Same as, a, as it was in the movie. Very nice clean car underneath, sitting on uh, Allen's suspension. The car really drives, handles great. I took it to the track. I take it everywhere I get yeah. to enjoy it and share it with people like you, right? <laughs> I wouldn't let this leave my sight <laughs> as she's doing right there right now, the luckiest girl in the world. <laughs> my baby girl. <laughs> so honored, but looking at this car, you could tell with all the detail that went into it, this wasn't just like an overnight thing. Were you, were you dreaming of owning a car like this for a while? What inspired you to? The funny thing you're saying, not an overnight car. Um, yes, I've gathered the parts. It took me like a year to gather all the parts, but mm -hmm. once I got the very last piece I needed. I bought the car on a Thursday. The next Friday, the car was done. Five you're, days. You're, you're lying to me right Five now. Days. It's all on my IG. Five, okay. well, five the, days. <laughs> that was pre-pandemic because right now no, that no, equals it was, five. It was uh, this uh, March. We had a show called uh, Fuel Fest mm -hmm. at Irwindale. Um, five days before Fuel Fest. The, the day of the show, Saturday, the day of the show, it, it, was, it was done. All right, well, I changed what I said about her being the luckiest girl in the world. He's officially the luckiest guy in the world. He got his car built within a week during the pandemic. It's, uh, not, it's not my first uh, rodeo. Um, I have a couple of more. I've built uh, the Too Fast, Too Furious Purple Eclipse. The oh, Tyrese's yeah, the car. Tyrese wing. <laughs> I've built uh, the Green Eclipse from the first movie. I've built the RX-7 uh, from the first movie. I built the, the High Civic. So 
this is my recent build, so I kind of gained some experience over the, the past uh, two years. I've been doing it for the last two years, but I've really, you can tell that I'm a fanboy. I've moved, I've, I've moved to the U.S. from Israel, where modifying the car is not allowed, so I just came and I, I exploded, you know. I just wanted to modify and go to the extreme, and, you know, I grew up on those movies in the... You know, in the late 90s, uh, so I was like, what would be more fun than having a weekend car, something like that, right? I love it. I love it so much. This is, this is a beaut. Guys, you got you to gotta actually look at this car and all of the details here. Look at this. Look at the craftsmanship. I'm in love. I'm in awe. The steering wheel. <sighs> Everything is spot on. Everything is movie accurate. I didn't get to do the uh, just yet. The journey with building the car, meeting people, I got to meet some of the cast, they even signed the car. It's just, just been amazing, amazing journey with it. That's just. So you, it, it looks pretty much done here, except for the fuzzy seats. Correct. What's next Ex after this? Exterior wise, it's, uh, it's spot on. What's next? You know, you're done with this car pretty much. You said you've done other Fast and Furious builds. Is there any other car that you're looking to, to work on after this one? <laughs> I really want to do the, the R34 from Too Fast, Too Furious. I still, I'm still on the fence if it's going to be a true GTR or a GTT because pricing is so crazy with the GTRs right mm -hmm. now. But either way, I'm going to get it done. I can't wait. <laughs> We're excited. Sean, thanks so much for your time. Thank I you really for having me on the show. <laughs> really, really appreciate it. It's an honor. Hopefully I get to see this and more builds riding around the streets of LA. You will, for sure you will. I know y'all see this right next to me. A beaut, FD generation. We have an original NSX and my favorite color. And he has the same color wheels as me. Oh my God. You think he'll let me trade cars? I said that's where the fun happens, so. We have a C8 right here that's crazy overpriced because of markups, so I'm pretty sure he paid like 130 for this car. Pretty positive. I would too if I was being honest, because it's a fucking C8. It's a mid-engine Corvette. If I had the money, I would get the ZL6, but that's a different story. And if I'm doing math right, I can't tell from the back if it's a 997 or one. It's 997. Beautiful. 964. And wait to drive this around the North Pole. And this is honestly one of my favorite Z's. They're very hard to work on, super shitty. You could barely fit like a couple fingers in this engine bay, but outside of that, it's beautiful. Little trivia fact, this is one of the first cars where we were steering, where you could steer with all four wheels. We're making our entrance into the promised land. Guys, you will not believe this. There's a... I don't know what kind of car this is. I think it says on it that it's a Lamborghini. I don't know. It might, it, it might be a fucking Lamborghini. I would have never known had he not put Lamborghini on the side of his car. I don't like hatches, but this is kind of sexy. The, um, again, I don't really like hatches, so I don't have much to say here. Oh, sick. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing to my Supra is this fender work right here. That's the very next mod. I was hoping to have it done and have it shipped for the car show, but unfortunately it didn't make it here yet. But this is beautiful. I love how it exposes the front tire like that. It gives an aggressive stance. Um, one of the catches that you do have is that sometimes it doesn't line up perfectly, but it's beautifully done. Jarrell, Rylick, nice to meet you. Rylick? R-Y-L-I-C. I was looking at the the, uh, the Pure 800 on my car, like, but I wanted to see what it was like building up the stock yeah. turbo now and seeing like, and I'm enjoying it, it's fun. I was nervous like before I did the tune because if you know, when you got the car stock, the back end still gets a little loose mm -hmm. and slippery. So I was like, shit, if I like, you know, if I'm throwing an extra 100 horsepower on this, like what is it gonna feel like? So I was right. nervous and it's, it's actually manageable power. So now I'm like, okay, I would be confident with like right. the next step being 800. How was it for you going from? From the stock to yeah. 800? Oh, I, I love it, man. Like uh, the response is still pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, we got, it, we, got, we got it all dialed in with our tune um, for like uh, just having the power band in the right place mm -hmm. and then, you know, just keeping the power up there. But at the same time, you know, not only did we do like the power upgrades, but we also did like the suspension work, the aero, like all that kind of put together. Mm -hmm you know, kind of like works in, works in unison, you know, to like hold the power down. 
And then at the same time, with all that power, you got to have like a big brake kit too to, to yeah. stop. So <laughs> if, if you're going faster, you got to slow it faster. Yep, yep. So I want to make sure that everything's like complete on my mm -hmm. car, you know. So really building it for uh, very like performance performance um, purpose. Is it track oriented? Is that the, the use yeah. for the car? Yep. Awesome. So track oriented, but at the same time, I can still drive it on the street to go places and you know everything is uh, is manageable i just aligned my uh, suspension for i wasn't trying to go full track use but it's like pretty aggressive right now so it's the first time so like the catch is like you drive the car at normal pace you're gonna get that in you know inner wear but yeah. if you drive it aggressive perfect so i was like that's a perfect excuse to like beat the shit out of my car exactly like, exactly yeah, man i love it what tracks do you uh typically go to uh, pretty much all like the SoCal tracks around mm -hmm. here, Willow Springs, Bun Willow, Chuck Walla. Uh, I even took it to uh, Laguna Seca oh my up God. north. It's a beautiful track. How was is, how is that? You know the turn I'm talking about. How was that turn? Oh, the corkscrew? Yeah. Oh, man, the corkscrew, like every, every single time, you know, you're coming at it and you don't see the bottom of it. So you're like, okay. You just kind of kind of memorize the line through like you know like playing uh, Forza, Forza and like <laughs> Gran Turismo. So I'm like, okay, this is the line right here. Trust it. Boom! Take it all the way down. Yeah. So all in all, what's your favorite thing about this car? Um, you know what? Uh, favorite thing? I would have to say just like the overall like handling of it. You know, um, because it is like it's not like a, a really light car, mm -hmm. but it feels like it. You know, it feels like it, especially once you get your suspension all dialed up mm -hmm. and um, and just like you know, I, I did the square wheels and tires, so yeah. I have like a 295 tire up front. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so it's an 18 by 10 and a half all around. Like 295s, yeah. Gee, for me, when I first looked at the Supra, I, I didn't like it originally. I wanted it to have that Toyota heritage. I was like, I already have a BMW. This yeah. shouldn't be a BMW underneath. What made you go with this car? Um, you know what? I, I was I was following the car for a while because they had it, you know, every single year, oh, the Supra's going to come out. The Supra's coming out. No, the Supra's not coming out. And then I, I've been looking at all, like, the spy photos and, like, the testing and I know they're putting a lot of work in, you know, both BMW and Toyota, um, you know, at, at tracks over in Europe and all that, Japan. And I just knew, I was like, you know what, they're putting that much effort and work into it. It's going to be good. Like, I just got to trust it, you know. And at the same time, you know, I know a bunch of BMW guys, too, and they all love, like, the B58 um, platform and all that stuff. So. Yeah. That's the one thing that I feel makes this a true Supra, because if we remember the 2JZ, it was reliable on taking on power. Mm -hmm. Like, you build those things up. You see, guys, you can daily it with 600 horsepower. Of course, there's those 1,000 horsepower Supras that right. we saw. But the thing about the B58 is that it can reliably take on aftermarket work. Yep. Like, okay. that makes this a Supra, in my opinion. Like, BMW perfected this motor, and, like, I couldn't think of a better motor to go in the Toyota. And, like, truthfully, I didn't. I, you know, I had my qualms with it initially. I was like, I didn't want it to look like or feel like a BMW inside. Mm -hmm. But now that I look at like Toyota's current design language, I'm really glad that BMW did the inside because it might not have looked as good inside. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, I don't have any internal work done. Mm -hmm. It's just all bolt-ons and I'm pushing 655 to the wheels. <laughs> Jesus, I think I'm right around 550. So I, uh, we need to take a ride in this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Once I get the built transmission on there, I'll be in the mid 700s. Yeah, so that's what's limiting me. Uh, we are we are ready for it. Well, I appreciate it so much. Yeah, you said really. Jarrell. Yeah. Did I get it right? Yep. Okay, cool. I know numbers, not names, so <laughs> it's a it's All a pleasure. Good. If you're looking behind me, you might see the hottest hatch of hatches. It's a GR Yaris. They haven't really made their way out here yet, but people are going crazy about this car. It's getting 10 out of 10 reviews. It's a beaut. Toyota and team. Gazoo Racing managed to stuff, I believe, about 250 horses into this thing and 260 pound-feet of torque. I could be dyslexic right now and having the numbers backwards, but either way, that's a lot of power to be fitting in a small car like this. Go online, just search this name up. You'll see all of the comparisons they have with it. Everybody is beating off the line. It's going to be great. It's a good direction for GR and all that Toyota's doing. Obviously, you know my love for Porsche, especially wide-body Porsches. So I don't really have to say much here. They talk for themselves. Plus, we already did a special on a Porsche anyways in Gio's Lava Orange 992. Okay, remember what I said about not talking about Porsches? So I don't really have to say much here because I completely lied. So in my opinion, this might be the best in show, but I'm biased because I just talk about Porsches all the time. I just love Porsche, 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 Porsche. But it's the attention to detail that really gets me here. What makes this car so special in your opinion? 
Well, it's got a 3.9 liter Kinsler drive-by-wire engine that was custom built starting from the crankshaft. So big valves, custom heads, custom pistons, and this is the really cool part about it. The uh, Kinsler individual throttle body fuel injection with motorsport actuators and this aluminum plenum is the first one Kinsler ever made. Um, so it's a, the whole motor was built to be like the highest performance motor that you can put in a street driven Porsche. We were very successful with it. We just dynoed it yesterday. Uh, we hit 466 crankshaft horsepower or 387 at the wheels at 7,250 RPMs. Uh, it was a total success. The car is just, it's just a beast of a car. That, so. that gives me drivable power, but smiles. The yeah, oh, time. lots of smiles on this, <laughs> yeah. What brings the most smile to your face when you think about this car? The very best thing that could possibly happen is when the owner of the car just says, I love it. There's nothing better to me. I built this for a friend of mine and uh, he absolutely loves the car and I, there's no better reward for them. You hear that? He is the best friend in the world. He built this for his friend. All of my friends, you have to build me cars now or else you're a pretty terrible friend. I, I didn't make the rules, yeah. he did. Well, you gotta break a couple of piggy banks for it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find all the piggy banks around town. Yeah. I love it. This this car though, when I look at it, it looks like it's been so well upkept. It, it, it looks like almost in perfect condition. I know that there's a lot of custom work and fabrication that went into it, but just alone from that, I'm not seeing a lot of the typical wear and tear that I might see on a car this that's been around for this long. What, what do you think contributed to that? Well, the car only has about 20 miles on it right now. So after we built it, we took it to SEMA and we drove it about two or three miles up there and uh, we just drove it to the dyno and under a little bit of a street testing, but that's it. So it's got about 20 miles on it now since it was built. You're doing a great job at baby in this car. You guys are great parents, but also I want you to be terrible parents and to drive and abuse this car. <laughs> drive it, put more miles on it. But no, honestly, a great job. I love everything about it. SV Auto, you've done an amazing job. There's so many immaculate details from here from beginning to end. Simo, thanks again for taking the time to talk with us about this beautiful car. I understand why Motor Trend and everybody is losing their minds about it, giving you all this coverage. I think SV Auto deserves all of the praise it's getting right now. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. If you look to our right, you're going to see the car that Jason Camisa drools over week over week and understand why. This is what made the E30 M3 what it is today, a butte. But what I'm most excited about is our new buddy Mark's R34 sitting behind us. Look at this paint job. Music is loud as shit here, so you're probably not going to hear anything I'm saying. But it doesn't matter what I'm saying. You just want to look at this R34. Look at these BBS LM rims that he has. Look at the pearlescent nuts. The red center cap. A beaut. This car, if you're looking at it closely, this is the car that Paul Walker made famous in Fast and the Furious 2 which was called Too Fast, Too Furious, which is also the worst Fast and Furious movie. Just kidding, it was actually decent. Let's, let's take a look around the car. And you know it is R34, because if you look inside, you'll see that it's right-hand drive. Wow. And it looks like we're in R heaven, because if you look behind me now, we have another R30 something. Beautiful, sexy. I'm not into drifting like that, but if you are, you might want to peek over here. Looks beautifully done. I'm sure they get sideways a lot, or whatever it is you do when you drift. Okay, this is kind of sick on the inside, guys. You might have to catch all these details. I'm, I'm very H-word right now. I'm not into fisting, but you could if you wanted to. This is the biggest intake I've ever seen in my entire life. Literally, my head could fit in that. Finally, we're seeing somebody that did something decent to their Tesla. All the time when I'm looking at a Tesla, I'm like, why are your tires only 10 inches wide? Like, are you, are you sure you're not, they're not going to fall off on the freeway? It looks very unstable. But for once, we see a Tesla. Look at this RSF front splitter, these Advan wheels. This concaveness is so sexy. I'm sure they like lose about 100 miles in range just putting this shit on here, but it is beautiful. All of this done, I, I need to see y'all doing more things to your Teslas. 
well done. The wrap, the gills, even though they're non-functional, but all of the details are sexy. I'm here for it. I'm not a Tesla guy, but I'm here for this one. On the complete opposite side of the spectrum from electrification, you have this butte, the 2JZ, and we have a guy in a mask. He's a real charm here. This is what got me to get my Super in the first place was the 2JZ. If you've even heard this car spool up, it'll probably get you wet. Insane, just look at everything from the wheel build to the fitment. Look at these, these bulks are sitting beautifully on here. My favorite thing about this generation of the Super though is how everything on the interior was so driver focused. That whole panel and everything just screams, drive me, look at me. What's your name, man? Alex. Alex? Yeah. Rylick, nice to meet you, man. I'm loving your Supra. Tell me a little bit about it. I mean, it's stock motor, stock block, stock head. Just a big 67 millimeter turbo, upgraded uh, intake manifold, exhaust manifold, custom downpipe. It's got a full four inch uh, custom straight pipe. We did uh, the brake booster delete with custom lines, custom intercooler piping, and just kept it pretty simple. Just stock body, clean car with uh, Recaro seats and you know, just didn't want to go too crazy with this, just something that looks clean, you know? Honestly, there's not much you can do to these two cars. Well, I, I take that back, you can. You can do the Ville side, wide body, all of that, but they look so fucking beautiful yeah. from the factory. It's like, why do we want to touch this? Right. I, I love all the details. When I'm looking at the interior of your car, it's pretty well kept. Yeah. Did you do a lot of work to refurbish anything or was it like a low mile car when you got it? Uh, it wasn't really a low mile car. I mean, I guess it was like a decent mileage. It was like 112,000 miles. Nothing was really refurbished on it. It was still all original interior. The only thing I really did was upgrade the steering wheel, Recaro seats, and added the, like, the half cage. But other than that, it's all stock OEM. As you were saying, it's a 2JZ. You kept most of the internals pretty stock there. Tell me what it feels like to drive a 2JZ. I only drive them on fours in Gran Turismo. I've never had the opportunity. I have the A90 Super right now, and it's nothing like this. But as much as that puts a smile on my face, I could only imagine what this feels like. Tell me a little bit about it. I mean, I've never driven an A90, but I can tell you right now, I can. I think this is way different than that. This is definitely like a, a dream to drive. It's it's unique. It's it just sounds amazing. It's it's honestly like the funnest car ever. I mean, I love it. It just sounds amazing. It pulls good. It's a dope dope engine. You know, it's good. It, it has so many beautiful sounds in it. What's your favorite thing to do when driving the car? What's the thing you like listen to the most? Honestly, I haven't driven the car in like three years. I've been building it for so long. I still haven't driven it, so I don't even know what it's going to sound like. It doesn't start at the moment because of wiring issues, but once it starts, I mean, it should sound good with the custom straight pipe exhaust that it has. It should sound really loud. It's not, I mean, it should sound good for the inline stick, you know? Well, I'm starting my timer for you now. I really hope you get back into it and driving it soon. Either way, even if it just sits here, this is a dream. I would just run my hand across the car every morning. So, well done. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about your car. Awesome. Yeah, of course. Look at that Supra with those drag tires on the rear end. Oh, my God. You think I could chase them down right now? Just kidding. I have no energy for that shit. There's some beautiful cars over here, but too many to spend time talking about. So it's definitely not gonna happen. We have some beautiful camber on this LS over here. We have a Supra, we have this truck, we have a six. There's so many damn cars. I can't, there's a beautiful Aston Martin over there. I'm just not, I can't. This honestly caught all of my attention because we may be doing an episode with this very car in a couple of weeks. It has about a thousand horsepower in it. Yes, you heard me right. 1,000 horsepower in Ryan's McLaren. I, everything about this car, just the windshield itself is unique and how it's wrapped. Just imagine what it's like inside this car, whether it's just sitting in the cockpit or watching it do an anti-lag roll. You saw on episode five that we did an FD right-hand drive. It was beautiful, but look at this one. Look at this paint job. Snapple fact about this car, is that because of the rotary motor, you have to drive this shit aggressively. If you, if you ever find one of these where a grandma drove it, it's a piece of... Wow. It's like watching a woman leave you in the sunset. Just kidding, I don't like women. Girls on the floor.
A lot of people say there's golden eras for everything in life. Video games, movies, cars, for me. And it's usually tied to whenever you were born. For me, it was the 80s because I was an 80s baby. Or you say 2000s since I still look like y'all. And that's why we're here today. We're looking at the golden era of cars, the 80s and 90s, where there was a lot of innovation. You can start with something basic and turn it into something beautiful. And that's what today is all about at Radwood. You're asking a very biased guy because I'm unconventional, but everything great about Acura starts with the NSX. This is the beauty. This is when you think of 90s icons in the sports car world, it's the NSX. So I had to come and stop and take a look at this beautiful NSX. And because I'm a terrible host, I didn't even catch your name before I talked oh, about dude. your car. So my name's Josh. Wow, we're, we're talking with Josh about his NSX. Yeah. Give me the story, man. Why is this NSX here? Besides the fact that it's the NSX. All right, so <laughs> I only dated a cheerleader once in high school. It was like the beautiful blonde hair, blue eyed girl, right? And her dad had one. And I had an Integra and I didn't even have a cool type R. I had just a regular Integra. And so like I pretended all the time like this car <laughs> was like that car with the sunroof open, but it wasn't the target top. And um, so I've, I've successfully raised a car enthusiast myself. I've got a 22 year old daughter and she sent me a link to bring a trailer and I saw this car and I was just like mind blown because it's perfect, mint condition, OEM, everything. It's 100% bone stock and it will forever be that as long as I own it. Um, and it had 25,000 miles on it. That was it. Original um, miles? Uh, 25,000 original miles. That's it. And it's like I said, it's 100% OEM stock, brand new. Um, admittedly, I failed. I did not get it paint protection filmed right out of the gate. When it came to California, I took it for one drive and I got rock chips. So I got it fully, completely paint protection film all over the car. But, uh, but yeah, my daughter sent me a link and then I bid on it just for fun. And then literally about one minute before it was closing, I was actually at work in a meeting with a client and she called me. She was like, dad, dad, you got one minute left. And I'm like, one minute left for what are we talking about? She goes, dude, the NSX. And I was like, get out. And so then she goes, dad, 30 seconds, you're still winning. And I was like, come on, like, I'm not even online right now. I'm like on my phone in the middle of a meeting with a conference room full of people, right? But she called me four times in a row. So I was like, okay, maybe it's an emergency. And it was an emergency because I almost didn't get it. And then we got down to uh, dad, hey, dad, 10, nine, eight, right? All the way down to one, she goes, dad, you got it. And I was like, oh crap, I gotta call your mom. <laughs> so I called my mom, I was like, babe, I did a thing. She was like, dude, where are you going to put that car? <laughs> dude, right? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's a hundred percent original miles. It's 25,880 when I got it. It's now about 28,000 miles. And I took it straight to the Acura dealership across the street when I got it. I said, okay guys, tell me what needs to be invested. Do I need oil change? Do I need, what do I need? I do need any kind of, you know, hoses, timing belts, what? And they came back to me about two days later. I'm like, dude, this car's in perfect, flawless condition. And that's the story, dude. Right? I can't get I can't get floor mats because they stopped making them. I mean, what? I mean, who really needs those anyways, <laughs> right? Your foot's gonna be slipping off that clutch anyways. You're gonna be wearing into the ground. Don't worry about right? the floor mats. You, aside from the rock chips, what was that first drive like? Oh, you guys. So again, having an Integra when I was a kid, I had a '96, uh, and it was not the cool GSR. I had just like special edition. Uh, but all the beeps, like the second I put the key in all the beeps from my high school days, and then the smells, right? It was just 100% pure nostalgic. And dude, you know, cars lost the manual, but the year 2000 was the year I stopped having a manual. I got to drive a manual again, and that was just mind blowing. And then I had to take the top off, right? Like that just had to happen just immediately. leave it on the freeway. I didn't even start the... the car before I took the top, top <laughs> off. And then I just went for a drive, and it was like, I don't know, I went through three tanks of gas that day. Like I literally didn't, I just got in the car and drove and babe, I'll call you later. <laughs> and then, yeah, that was it. I love that so much. I have not had the privilege of driving an NSX yet, except unless it's Gran Turismo or Forza <laughs> or some arcade, right? Then I'm super experienced with these. But yeah. I could only imagine what 
this motor sounds like with that VTEC sitting right behind you and those high RPMs, paradise. Well, I, we'll I'm have a to little, do a drive. We'll, we'll do a drive. We, we, I think we might have to. Yeah. Awesome. No um, it's a beautiful car. I'm just taking in everything about it. I, I think specifically I like this generation the most. I know they eventually went to the one where it was like the flat nose with the, the tail light sitting there, but yep. I, it's something about pop-up headlights to me. It's about pop-up, up, up and down headlights. Right? <laughs> right? Can't say that right because we're not doing the media. But. I, I was, well, <laughs> but I will tell you this. The only other thing that I did do that, like, I did no mods. I did no mods, but I did replace. These are actually 2002 OEM wheels. These are not the wheels that came with it. But other than that, man, I mean, it's 100% bone stock. I love my pop-up up and down headlights, and uh, yeah, I couldn't. I'm like, I'm not going to do anything else. I mean, I hardwired a radar detector because that's kind of smart. The most important right? mod. Right. Right. I mean, that's the most important mod. Um, and there you have it. Love it, Josh. Thanks so much. I'm going to take a look around at the, the tan interior, the two tone. Wow. Can you can you guys imagine getting to drive home in this? Hey, do you want a Supra? Do you want to trade? You like the new Supra, right? You love that. You love it so much. <laughs> I definitely will take you up on that offer to ride in the NSX. All right, pleasure. All right. pleasure. One of the first cars to catch my attention when I walked in here was the Integra because it's an integral part of the tuning history. I'm here with Alan, looking at his beautiful Type R today. Alan, I, we see it, we're looking at it. It's a work of beauty. Tell us about this car, what makes it so unique and special. Why it's here today at Radwood, parked on the grass. Uh, you know, this has been my educational project. Uh, there's a lot of things that kind of shaped its uh, trajectory, but really this was uh, a car that I could try and make the most of Honda's Acura's uh, original intent, which is develop that track day car. I can drive to the track, beat the hell out of it at the track, just have a blast and drive it home. Are you tracking it right now? Absolutely, it's been out at Willow Springs, big and streets, and oh, just a pleasure. I could only imagine. I'm trying to work my way up to track day so far, but I feel like these are the most exciting cars to take to track days because they're at that peak where it's enjoyable fun, right? It's not like, crap, I'm at 100 miles per hour in second gear and I can't really get any enjoyment. I can't feel any RPMs. No, it's 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 driving enjoyment like in there. So absolutely, and I would say best advice, PSA, don't wait, sign up with the school, sign up for a track day, go take whatever you got, like get out there, have a blast. Like it doesn't, it doesn't need to be a Type R, it doesn't need to be shiny, just go have fun. How long have you been racing cars? You know, that was my first track day. It was this, that was the culmination of this car. Uh, Honda Homecoming was its first car show. Hit the ground. It's done 700 miles since I put it on the ground. And, you know, the first thing, as soon as I, you know, got the, the shiny presentation out of the way, was out to the track. And it was a blast. It's going to be there, you know, as often as I can get it. What have you done to it to get it track ready? Personal revelation, I'm a terrible driver. I can't <laughs> hang with the beauty that is the ITR's original engine, a 6,000 like power band. I, I can't hang in that rare air. Okay. So the first thing I did is I, I needed to add a little force injection to, or, or force induction to, to extend that power band. So it's got a Jackson Racing supercharger on it. Um, had to be something that was gonna be carb legal because again, my requirement is it had to be able to drive to the track. I wasn't gonna trailer it. Uh, I don't need a fourth vehicle to drive one to the track, <laughs> just can't do it. Upgraded brakes, of course, gotta be there. General creature comfort stuff, little sport seats that have high bolsters, keep you in place. A little smaller uh, JDM steering wheel. Actually, that's the, the whole story behind the, the Honda Badging, I'm a little OCD. And so I didn't want to rock a steering wheel that had an H logo without the matching emblems. Apologies to Acura. I love how the OCD made its way to this shift boot and uh, and and everything really. Yeah, everything has a story. That shifter actually wasn't intended. Uh, it was a hybrid racing shifter. Mm -hmm. It was track purpose. So track purpose in California, Southern California specifically, you're gonna face heat. Forced induction, especially a Jackson Racing roots blower, you're gonna add even more heat that you have to handle on top of that. So everything was designed. Everything that went into it was designed around heat management. Upgraded cooling, vented hood everything to try and dump that thermal load as much as we can. It's actually what we're looking at right here is a four gallon tank for water methanol injection. 
uh, so I can get through a, a nice uh, track session without having to worry about fill up, and it's gonna cool that blower down for me, cool that intake down, prevent detonation. Guys, one of the most important things you can do, aside from protecting your car from all other things, is make sure that you keep those temperatures down. There's nothing more disappointing or useless in having a car than heat soak. Heat soak does the exact opposite of what you want your car to do. It's not it's not good for the internals, it's not good for the motor, and it's just not good for, you know, that butt dyno as we call it, right? And then of course, you know, you always you never have the control you think you do, right? So the metrics are important. So I added the race capture data uh, acquisition system, oil uh, temp sense directly in the Mugen oil oh. pan. So it sits at that level, gets the hottest temp that it's gonna see, and I can get the warning on that right there on the phone mount uh, that's sitting there all the time. I'm not that smart a driver again, I need the flashing light. Uh, so there, there it is right there for me off the dash, uh, but still there in the viz. Well, you've done about all the great things that you can to this generation of the Integra, but I'm gonna have to ask since we're here, what are your thoughts on the new girl? I'm excited about it personally. You know what? When I first saw like it was total nostalgia, like the thing that set me off, if you take a half step back here, this is just an amazing design cue. Same font, to see that brought over and recognized in the new model, like that's exciting. And okay, you know, say what you want about the launch of it. And you know, maybe the lighting wasn't the best, there wasn't the right energy there. If you look at the brakes on that thing, front and rear, like I have not seen the interior on it. They won't let anybody see it. I've not seen under the hood yet. And okay, the specs are whatever. They're a grocery getter. Mm -hmm. They're fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, it sure has a heck of a lot more torque than like probably mm -hmm. this does today. Um, but uh, I, there's enough I see about it that's exciting. Like I want to see where they go. And I certainly like regardless whether I'm personally interested or not, I want them to be successful because I want them to keep supporting these guys. That's it for me. I think this Integra launch is very important for Acura right now in their direction. We saw, you know, hints of it where they were headed with the NSX. I think this is very, very important because as we know, a lot of the consumer buys are coming from uh, small SUVs, CUVs as you want to call them, crossovers. So knowing that Acura has been putting a lot of focus on the MDX, it's important to see like what does this mean for the cars that we enjoy to drive, right? So. Fingers crossed that when this is all finished, when it's a full production model, that this Integra holds up to the name. I appreciate your time so much, Alan. Thanks Thank for so giving much. us a look at this beauty. We're gonna get a look at the rest of the cars over here. Enjoy, it's, it's, it's quite the uh, smorgasbord. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And right now, this is a very special moment. I'm here with my boy, Eric. My name's Eric. He's usually behind the scenes. We're always talking about cars, regardless if he's on the camera or not. Yeah. But this is a very special moment, not just for me, but him, for him, because he used to work for this brand, for Acura. And I've never, ever seen this car before. So this is my first time taking it in in person. We're gonna see what it's given. And if I'm being honest, it's a it's a cute girl. It's a nice looking car. It's not screaming Integra not <laughs> out, <at all. laughs> outside of the, the decal. <laughs> we're we're kind of sort of there right now. Yeah. What I do like, these proportions look a lot better in person. Like now that I see it, I think it was the angle it was shot at too. I believe so. I believe so. I definitely feel that at this level, these proportions make a lot more sense. From here, when you saw it initially, it gave wagon. That's why they were like making those memes, like the Accord Sportback, right? It, it, it looked like a cross tour, but actually it, it looks pretty nice. Just not screaming Integra. Yeah. Yeah. And granted, I feel like, hey, maybe once tuners get their hands on it and we see it dropped a little bit more and have aggressive stance that doesn't make it feel like it's almost in that CUV territory or yeah. Subaru territory, yeah. then maybe we could be like, okay, this is the Integra. But, I, there are things I like. I appreciate this. This is giving me the AMG GT. Yes. Uh, what is that shit called? Is it called a GT sedan? You know what yeah. I'm talking about, yep. the Ford. Yep. It's giving me that from the back. I like these lines here. It's kind of giving me a little Genesis right here as well. Yeah. I see a, a little Genesis here. I think once they come out with the Type S version, we're gonna see some, some really cool stuff yeah. here. This, this is great right here. This whole portion is like, the proportions, the angles, you could definitely see the influence of the NSX when you're looking definitely. at this part. Definitely. But outside of that. Love the wheels, I actually love yeah. the, the 
These these work on it, yeah. and I, I appreciate them having the yellow brimbos on here. Yep. This is cool. The detail here, how they there's like little small details that are beautiful. I yeah. think I think this detail within the headlights is great, and then how they're ingraining Integra in it. I do like the the uh, kind of hood line here as well. I like how they've cut it and and definitely. I do. It looks chiseled. It might be one of those cars that has to grow on us. It's. It's not what I was expecting, and I, I still am disappointed from what I thought it could be, but it's not a bad car by any means. We stand here in front of the Integra name, and I think that's the wrong part of the launch, right? I just don't think this should have been called an Integra. ILX? ILX Sportback. I mean, call it something along those lines, because it really is a better ILX. I mean, the ILX, not so great of a car, right? But this? This is a great upgrade. This is a beaut. Just not an Integra. I, I yeah. <laughs> well, got my impression of the Integra. Uh, I give it, my Rotten Tomato score is a 78%. Might need to see the Snyder cut. Acura, honestly, I'm excited that you're making steps in the right direction because I don't know what you've been doing for a while. But there is one thing that I'm still excited about. It's not this one. Do you see what I'm looking at? It's this one right here, the NSX. Earlier you saw us take a look at the 90s NSX, but this one is the most recent iteration of it. I have my qualms with the NSX, right? I felt it was too engineered. They had too many electronic components, things that weighed down the car. I wanted them to strip that away and just give us a tuner car. I wanted them to have a base one and then give us the special model. But with the Type S coming out and the changes they made there, I think they're the right things to make me still excited about this car. Exactly. exactly. I feel really good about it. I feel like uh, the Type S kind of brings back the, the, the its glory, you know? Yeah. I, I think that it still has the hybrid motors, but it's got a lot of more sport elements that actually remind me of the original. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, I, 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 I I love nothing more than to be inside of a mid-engine sports car. Uh, it's amazing. That's amazing. Good. There's That's nothing amazing. like it. Nothing. Yeah. You have the engine sitting right here. That is a harmony. <laughs> exactly. If you guys hear this song, tell me you're not thinking you're in a commercial right now. Is that a Swifter I, commercial? A broom? What is I it? I feel like we're in a commercial right, right now. <laughs> Perfect. On Honda's campus right now. <laughs> it's a commercial of all the things that Acura needs to keep doing right. Keep doing this shit. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Okay, we're here with Chef. If you want to call him Chef, he might want you to call him Dalton. I'll let you decide today. Uh, but we're here with a very, very special car to me. This is actually the first car that got me excited about sports cars, about muscle cars, about cars in general. Because Dodge decided to be Dodge and put a V10 motor into a vehicle that also had no ABS brakes, didn't really have any uh, door handles that you could really access, no air conditioning if I wasn't mistaken, and then the piping was sitting right underneath the driver's seat. So it's not the most comfortable car, <laughs> but it's just pure thrill, and that's me. Completely unconventional, but enough about me. You guys have seen me for millions of episodes. We're gonna talk with Chef. Hey there, how's it going? Good, good. So tell me a little bit about this Viper. I, I think just like you, I fell in love with this car in, in high school. This was, I had many die cast models and Dodge, they took the rules of the day and they just threw that out the window and said, we're gonna put the biggest engine we can into basically a go-kart and uh, it is a driver's car. No, you know, helpful aids, there's no uh, traction control, none of that stuff. Um, the, the first generations didn't even have door handles <laughs> or yeah. windows. Insane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the second generation, so at least I, I have some creature comforts, <laughs> but it, it is a, it's an experience. It, it's, it's very interesting to drive a car that's always trying to kill you. <laughs> that, <laughs> but that's that what makes it fun. Slogan, yeah. <laughs> what what made you choose the RT10 over the GTS? That's the, the coupe. What what made you decide this one? Yeah, so I, actually I blame my wife. Uh, she didn't want stripes. And so I had to look for a car that didn't have stripes and I found this one down in Oceanside, so yeah. You really lucked up with a color combo. I don't know if you guys have seen the interior yet. I'm gonna park the C so you can get a glimpse of that interior. 
<laughs> look, look at the detail in this. Look at this. I would love to, I would kill to have a color combo like this in a car. Were you even intending to find this, this type of in color? In the no. interior? I, again, I blame my wife. You know, she saw the car and she, she didn't say I love it. She said, that's okay. And I said, okay, that's good enough for me. I'm getting this one. <laughs> it's not enough. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah, but then I found out later uh, this color combination, uh, sapphire blue with the cognac interior, was only made in 2001. And uh, there are less than 250 out there. So it's a pretty rare color combination. Had you driven any muscle cars before this? Yeah, I had a, a Mustang 5.0 before this. So, yeah. Which 5.0? It was a 1994 GT convertible. Okay, yeah. the, the original yeah, 5.0. Yeah, the original 5.0. Yeah. That, was, that was a fun V8. It was a lighter car. It was a smaller body. What was it like going from a V8 to 10 cylinders? Yeah, so I had that car for over 20 years. It felt like an extension of my body. I knew exactly how that car drove. I got on this, and it still scares me. I still don't know what it's going to do on a daily basis. Um, they both have the same heavy clutch, though, so the Mustang definitely prepared me for that. Um, but it's just a different, and this gets looks and honks and, you know, hellos and every car wants to race me on the freeway. The Mustang was, you know, it was fun. It was, it was great, but this is a whole different beast. You said that you've been getting used to the car. You're still getting used to the yeah. car. How long have you had it now? I've had it a little over a year now. I put about 5,000 miles on it. Okay. Not enough time in a Viper. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> even, even still, I feel like you could spend a lifetime in this car and still have no idea what I it's going to get. I intend to own it for more than 20 years, just like the Mustang, yeah. I, I love it. I am here for it. These wheels, this this is 90s. When you think about 90s Dodge, it doesn't get much better than this. There's so many things that they did really well. The thing that I appreciate about this car the most is that it looks like its name. It literally looks like it's styled after a Viper. You can see the swoops from the front end of that. This looks like the head of a snake. And then the way it wraps around at the back, this is perfect. And then my favorite part is that bite, right? When it grips, when those tires make contact with the road, it's a thing of beauty. To you, what is your favorite thing about owning this? Oh man, that's a good, just it's raw. It's very raw. It's a driver's car. You, there's nothing between you and the road except for a massive engine and a lot of rubber and yeah. What is your preference driving it? Do you like to take it out on highways, on twists and turns? <laughs> I take this to the go get groceries, <laughs> I, any chance I get. But my favorite is driving down PCH along the beach. Yeah, on a nice day, you, you know, take the top off and it's just perfect. So any day other than this, because well, it's, it's nice now. But yeah. <laughs> it's trying, yeah, because we're interviewing the the <laughs> Viper. I think that's the reason the sun came out. Thanks, thank you so so much for giving us a glimpse at your car. It is a beauty. The most important question to me today is, why are you wearing the Chef? Well, as you know, this is Radwood, right? This is all about 80s and 90s culture. And, you know, Chef from South Park, you know, just, it, it, it felt right. <laughs> so, so I actually, I dressed as Prince a couple of years ago and won best costume that yes. year. So I, I went with, uh, yeah, so I went with the chef today. The the <laughs> I absolutely love it. Unfortunately, I don't own any Ferraris, so I get to stay right here and talk a little bit more about this Viper or look at other cars. Thanks again. Appreciate your time. Thanks. You guys are never, ever going to believe this. I'm at a car show talking about a car, the Corvette, and what do you know? Their owner is here, Michael. Nice to meet you. How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm good. This hey, beautiful show. It is. It's a beautiful show because this just happened in it. Not those two. This car right here. The Corvette is embedded in the DNA of American muscle cars. So I'm so glad that we're here with one of the best generations. I, if I'm doing the math right, this was a C4? This is a C4, yeah. What is it like owning a C4? Let me put it this way. It requires a lot of love and passion. <laughs> it's one of those cars, they just need attention, okay? But I wouldn't sell it, not in a million years. It's just gonna stay with me done so much work done to it already mostly by myself it's, it's joyful it's very rewarding I would say what, what does some of that work look like what have you done so far uh, fuel tank has needed to be replaced the fuel system lots of stuff around the engine the seats are new the paint job is new you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but it's uh, I don't know I like this car so much like I saw one when I was probably seven and maybe 80 years old I saw one on the movie or something uh -huh. and I just wanted it I literally just wanted it, and now I have it, and I'm 
pretty stoked about it. Was this your first Corvette? That's my first Corvette, yes. And, and I'm not a Corvette guy. I just wanted a C4. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> And rightfully so. Uh, it's it's interesting because you guys have close to the same color on the exterior, and then when you look inside, it's yeah. pretty close too. I think both of y'all lucked up. Actually, this was an accident because uh, I was looking for my way in, and they were looking for their way in. We couldn't kind of find the signs. Oh. And they stopped in the middle of the road, and I stopped right next to them. And I'm like, guys, I can't find their way in. I'll just follow you. And they said, oh, we'll just follow you, but I don't know where I'm going. So we ended up coming in here together and we just parked together so it was just spontaneous thing and but it's awesome all right i'm gonna need your lottery numbers because it's just it's giving me a lot oh, of good luck okay, okay i get that yeah but no i got lucky 100 percent. and the viper is my this is like my perfect two car garage by the way curves from the 80s just more straight lines and then early 90s but like those rounded curves mm, it's beautiful i love everything about this car I want to sit with these all day. I can't. I have to try and chat with these other car owners. But I'm so thankful that you gave us a second to Man, look at your car. Thank you so much. It was, uh, it was awesome. Thank you for stopping by. Absolutely. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, guys. You guys will never fucking believe this. Look who I ran into. Oh my God. What are the fucking chances? It's so good to see you, as always. One of my favorite cars. I'm so excited because it's gonna be on this week's episode or last week's, depending on when I edit this. Right. <laughs> Rob, this is one of the best cars of the 80s. I've told you a million times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop talking so much positive shit about this car because it speaks for itself. How did you feel about today's show? Uh, it was cool, man. There was a lot of good builds. Uh, rolled in with Castro Motorsports, so had all the swap. Cars lined up from here Sick. all the way back there. Oh. Yeah, we did most of my engine work and do good stuff. Wow. I'm like the only swap left. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> this, this is terrible. We're having so much fun. Honestly, I've, I think my favorite, outside of your car, because I love your car, the Viper and that NSX when you first yeah. walked in, the original. Yeah, I think it's Oh sweet. my God. Of course, I'm like a tuner, so I was like leaning towards the other one. Uh -huh but they were both sick. I was just... I love that I could get into a car and it teleported me to the 90s. Like everything looked just like it was leaving. He had 20,000 original miles on the car. Damn, I didn't Insane. That low. That's it, didn't want to bug you. One of my favorite cars. Thanks. We're gonna keep... Talk <laughs> <laughs> gonna keep talking about it, yeah, man. All right, cool, bye guys. We're here with Nolan, who had the pleasure of bringing a Gutha Works 911 here, 993 to be exact, my favorite 911 generation of all time. But not just that, take a look at what Gutha Works has done to this butte. There's such small details that went into making this car perfect from the carbon fiber that's sitting inside of these headlights to the wide body that was custom done and built for this car that looks like it should have left like this way from the factory too that ducktail that you could see, even if that lid wasn't sitting up like that over the engine bay, you would still probably see the ducktail from over here. It's it's done so well. Look at, look at this carbon fiber here, but you know what? I'm just a spectator. I just drive this car on Forza as all of these cars here. I don't really know much about it. I'm gonna let Nolan tell us a little bit about what makes this 911 look so unique. Yeah, each part of this car, like you said, is redone from the ground up. So they start with the 993 chassis. Each customer brings them one. It starts at $500,000 just to have one of these made. This one's optioned up to closer to $900,000. It's got the modern 911 GT3 motor in the back. So it's got all that power. The chassis is completely redone with some race uh, architecture. So, uh, you know, we're here as a partner of them. Motul, we make their oil, so they use our products and everything. So every detail in this car is completely redone. Yeah, and tell me a little bit about Motul as well. This is a new brand to me specifically. Yeah. Yeah, new brand. So we just came back in the U.S. about 25 years ago. We're one of the oldest oil companies from 1853, so we've been around for, for quite a while, but mostly, mostly in Europe uh, as a French company where we're headquarters now. So uh, we've made classic oils, race oils. We're launching here at Rabu with our 80s and 90s oil for those cars, so it's fitting to have the Gunther Works car here. 
uh, to showcase some I, of that. I love that. And what would you say is unique about the oil that you're presenting to these 80s and 90s cars? Yeah, I think a lot of people, they use the classic oil for, made more for the 60s and 70s cars, which is a little too oil. You know, it's mineral oil or it's got high, high zinc, um, or they're using the modern stuff from Walmart for new cars. So there's nothing good in the in between. So we have a semi-synthetic. It's got all the, like the, the um, ester technology from some of our race stuff. It's got our high zinc for a classic car. So it's kind of a good blend somewhere in the middle for these cars that people kind of forgot about, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a, it's a good product. Well, I'm, I'm excited. I'm probably going to try and get a little bit of information from you so I can test it out on my Supra or I'm building up an F30 3 Series trying to get it to, you know, M3 spec and hopefully start tracking it. I'm going to use that as my track car. So since you make race fuel, maybe this will be a good opportunity to, to get a feel. Absolutely. Let me know. We'll make sure to hook it up. Awesome. And aside from amazing brand here, tell me something else about this car. Is there any interesting detail that uh, even an enthusiast might not know about this car, per se. Like said, it's all about comfort, too, right? So these customers are outside of going on the track. There's little things. It's like the air suspension in the front end. So there is a button here to lift it when we're going in here in the parking lot to make sure we go over the speed bumps. You can get up over the parking spot. So it's all these little things you can kind of dial in. It's got Apple CarPlay. It's got like a, it looks like a vintage stereo, but it's got the Apple CarPlay and all the modern amenities in there. So, again, it's little details like that that you said that people might not see just from looking at it, but it's everything has gone through on this car to make it kind of perfect for that customer. So I love that. And you mentioned that it's the modern nine uh, GT3 motor in there. Yes. Is that from the 992 generation or? Yes. So you got the brand new. Brand new. What, what can you say? Yeah. You you literally have the best of both worlds. Like, this is the perfect car for me. This is, I love this generation of Porsche, and then you take the engineering, the best of the best from the modern. Love it, love it. Thank you so much for your time today, Nolan. I really, really appreciate it. This, this made my day, and hopefully whoever's watching this. Save it for your savior, baby, I can't be your anchor Blame it on my disposition, mint condition is my flavor I'm licking veins, I taste a breakup Think I won't be there when you wake up Cause I don't need nobody, you seen the proof, you seen the paste ups What you think I'm made of, I'm made of honor, say I'm dangerous In the drugstore, what they label us, fuck You gonna open me up, the Lambos are her favorite She love it when the doors go up she love it when the doors go up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She love it when the doors go up. That she know me better than the last one to blow me off. I can see a band under her lip gloss, and I go home after I get off. Talk to her like the cops. Hey girl, what you doing in this parking lot? You won't find home here, nah. No chairs, feel hard, no stairs, feel thoughts. 